All right, let's see. FEMA. FEMA is a government entity established in order to uh, deal with uh, natural catastrophes and to bail everybody, bail people out. It started as a project uh, that basically didn't have a lot of money and was just going to provide, uh, you know, the worst hit, the poorest people, the people who couldn't buy insurance, you know, so just, just really, really extreme cases. And it was very small. And as a consequence of it being very small, there was ongoing incentive for people to buy insurance and to really take personal responsibility about where they built their home in terms of fire zones, or flood zones, or hurricane zones, or whatever. Um, and uh, also, as I said, buy insurance. And for, I don't know, community help, for charity, to help people who got into real trouble because of natural disasters. But during the 1980s, as there were floods in the Midwest and floods here and floods there, uh, it became popular for politicians to fly into a disaster zone, look around, say, God, this is truly horrific. This is uh, horrible, terrible, unthinkable. The federal government needs to do something. I am going to get Congress to pass a special uh, allocation of funds uh, and uh, bail you guys all out. It's terrible. You have to suffer through this. Something needs to be done. And I, I, the president, President Bush, President Clinton, President Bush again, President Obama, I will do it. Great photo ops, great opportunity to show how caring they are and how willing they are to spend other people's money in assisting, assisting the, uh, uh, those who are really desperate and devastated by natural disaster. And every presidency, the amount of money allocated to natural disasters grew and grew and grew and grew to the point where it wasn't just to help the very poor, the people who really could not take care of themselves, the people who really got dev devastated. But now it basically became a program, FEMA did, that it bailed out everybody. Anybody who didn't have insurance got bailed out. Anybody who suffered real losses got bailed out. Where there was an earthquake, where there was a fire, where there, and, and it used to be big catastrophes. And then the size of the catastrophe kept shrinking. FEMA got involved in smaller and smaller and smaller catastrophes. And every time Congress would pass a bill, $80 billion, I think it was Katrina, it was $80 billion. And, I mean, the money just flowed, and, and you know how well it was spent and how well it was allocated to the uh, sufferers. But the point here is that once you do that, you create a massive moral hazard, and that is people stop buying insurance because they figure, why stop buying insurance? My neighbor who didn't have insurance got bailed out by the government. I, got, I had a fight with the insurance company to get what I wanted. I should have never bought insurance and just waited to be bailed out by FEMA. So FEMA is indeed, I think, one of the most immoral agencies out there. It creates massive disincentives for people to think about where they're building homes, massive disincentives for people to buy insurance, massive disincentives for people to actually be responsible. It's a welfare program for everybody. Everybody can apply as long as they've been hit by a natural disaster. They've nationalized federalized emergency services. Well, but, but welfare, because this is bailout money. This is, here's money, buy a new home. This is money, not just money, here, feed yourself while, you know, it's really, really, why you lost your job. Here's money to build your new home and everything else. And I, I, I've seen some, you know, people putting up stupid stuff on the chat. You know, people in the hurricane zone only got $750 per person, but Israelis, if you look at the, total amount of aid the United States provided is all divided by the population. They got 10 times more. I mean, that's such BS because FEMA's just started. What they gave the people right now is just the beginning. Now, it's also true that the money America gives Israel is of a different kind. It's national security money. It's money we all 
are paying for our own defense. We're, we're outsourcing it to Israel, which is cheaper for us. Same with Ukraine. But it's also just not true that the Americans are going to get this small number of dollars. FEMA is just getting started. What happens now is Congress will probably get together. They've already allocated $20 billion, $20 billion for natural uh, disaster relief in the funding bill that just passed to avoid a government shutdown recently. They will probably allocate much more of that once the damage in North Carolina is fully assessed. And a huge amount of money is going to flow to FEMA to allocate for all kinds of things. Probably as much, if not more, than what Israel has received over the last year. Now, Republicans are also accusing FEMA of spending its money on migrants instead of on natural disaster relief. That's just technically not true. The migrant money comes from another pool that FEMA has. Why does FEMA have a pool of money for migrants? I don't know. Don't ask me. It's crazy. But this is, this is agency creep. You set up an agency to do one thing. It does it bigger and bigger and bigger. But it also says, wait a minute, but there's things over there that look a little bit like this. Not exactly, but a little bit. Maybe we should do those as well. And maybe we should do those as well. And the mission creep just takes over and you get an organization that does a million things that Congress never intended it to do when it set it up. But so be it. The pool for, uh, for the hurricane relief is a different pool. They've only started spending it. Again, Congress is going to allocate more money. Uh, the, the, the Republicans are just so, I mean, Democrats are the same way. But on, uh, right now, Republicans just want to find any excuse to highlight what they see is the number one problem in America, and that's immigration, migrants. They're legal or illegal. That's the number one issue. I mean, Trump has already said he is going to throw out of the country the Haitian migrants in, uh, in uh, what was it, South, Southfield, Ohio, even though the legal... Also, J.D. Vance is on a tear right now about uh, housing costs going up because of migrants. As if housing prices weren't going up before. But housing prices are going up because of migrants. Uh, not because of shortage of supply, which, by the way, shortage of supply, which is Springfield. Sorry, uh, what did I say? Southfield? Springfield. Um, not because of a shortage, uh, because of a shortage of supply, which is partially caused by a shortage of workers, which is caused by not enough migrants. We need more migrants to be able to build all the houses that you and the new migrants are going to need. But home prices should not be going up because of uh, an expanding population. Supply should easily match demand. All right, so FEMA, a, a, a you know, really, really, it used to be, FEMA used to be the kind of thing that Republicans would constantly criticize, some Republicans, kind of free market Republicans during the 90s and 2000s, they would constantly criticize FEMA, they would explain the moral hazard, they would explain how they've caused distortions and problems, and now it's like they're arguing, Republicans are arguing that Biden is not giving enough money to FEMA. That FEMA's not bailing out enough people. So, I mean, that's the Republican Party. It basically gives up every time, gave up on Social Security, gave up on Medicaid, gave up on welfare, gave, gives up fighting FEMA. They give, give up fighting these regular, these agencies, these programs, uh, these, uh, these welfare programs, other programs. They just give it up and, and they, they, they just roll with it. Uh, and, it, you know, this is how we get the Republican Party to the left of, I think, the Democratic Party 30, 40 years ago.